Hey everyone, Freddy with Distinct Mastering here. Today I want to show you how to prep your music for stereo mastering. I've got a session open here by Modern Classics. I had the pleasure of mixing and mastering this track for them, and this is the actual production session. So I'm going to go ahead and play you a little bit of this so you can hear what it sounds like. All right, as you can see, it sounds pretty good as is, but we still want to get this professionally mastered and get it sounding as best as it can. So there's seven steps you should pay attention to when prepping your files for stereo mastering. The first step is you want to eliminate all of the noise. So what I mean by that, any unused regions or leftover bits of audio, that can create clicks, pops, and noises, and you want to get rid of all of that. So make sure that your arrangement view is very clean and tidy and all bits of audio and tracks that you're not using are removed. Make sure to add fade ins and outs on all of the audio clips to everything so it is smooth and seamless. The second step you want to do is you want to leave a little silence at the beginning and at the end of the track. This track goes all the way to the beginning so it's as simple as clicking and dragging it over. And this will give us a little silence at the beginning. And when you're doing your export or your bounces, you want to make sure you select over the end of the track. This gives us a little room to work and make sure to put the fades and make the transitions nice. Also, if you have effects that last after the end of the song, this will ensure that you do not cut anything off and ensures that you're sending your whole song intact. This is a very overlooked step, so make sure you're not cutting your track short. And this will ensure that we get the complete song in full. The third step is to clean the master bus and make sure you have no plugins on that. A lot of times you'll see producers using EQ, compression, limiters, ultra maximizers, and other plugins on the master bus. This track doesn't have a lot going on on the master bus right now, but you want to make sure that all of this stuff is either removed or bypassed. So make sure you turn off everything on your master bus. The next thing you want to pay attention to, which is step four, is leaving enough headroom on the master. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this track again, and you'll see that you want to get to a part where the majority of the song is running at a good volume, and you can see right here that it's pinging under negative 12, which is a little low. You want to be at about minus six. I have this song set up for the video purposes right now, but as you can see, I'm going to turn this limiter on and you'll see that the master bus is running at about minus six. That's the sweet spot, but remember, you want to have the limiter and everything off. And I do not advise you turn up your master fader, you should leave that at unity or zero. And as long as you're not going over zero on your faders here, you should be good. There's a lot of tracks within these groups, so you want to make sure your gain staging is proper. Now you can't be at the top because it won't give us any room to work. You want to be at around minus 6 dB. You know, somewhere in this region is perfect. So giving us enough headroom is important. We're going to go ahead and get your tracks nice and loud and we need that headroom to be able to work. After you've got your master bus all set up, next is step five. Any plugins that have dithering, make sure you turn that off. So if this plugin was on, which it's not, it's bypassed, but if this plugin was used somewhere or other plugins that have a dithering function, make sure you turn that off. As well as on your export, make sure the dithering is turned off. After you've got your dithering off, we move into step six. When you're ready to export your bounce, here in Ableton, I'm gonna go ahead and use the export audio. You need to make sure that you're bouncing in the same format that the session was started in. This session was started in 16-bit 44.1, so it defaults to that. You can't go any higher. Ideally, we prefer to receive higher quality files, but if the session was started in 16-bit, you need to leave it there. As well as if you wanted to have a higher sample rate, but you need to begin with that. So we're gonna leave that alone. You always wanna bounce in WAVE or AIFF. You don't wanna send us final mixes as MP3s. You're going to degrade your audio quality and it's not good for mastering. Once again, you want to make sure your dither is turned off, and once you have all of that stuff, you're going to want to do your export and name your track. And those are the six steps right there that you need to handle within your session. The seventh step is to provide a reference track or two. One to two tracks that you like, that you want your song to sound similar to. Be mindful 
that if you are recording in a garage or don't have a lot of gear, it could be tough to get your music sounding like a band that was professionally recorded in a professional studio. Be mindful the references should be of a similar genre, and this will help us understand where you want to go. But remember, you have to be realistic in the recording process when comparing your track to the references. Reference tracks help us get an understanding of where you want to be and what we need to do to get it there. It can help us give you mixing advice on your music as well, so it's a great thing to include in the folder. Once you've got that done, zip it up and use the WeTransfer upload link on our website, and we could then get started on your mastering. Remember to subscribe to us on YouTube, and feel free to contact us at distinctmastering.com if you have any questions. Thank you.